Hello everybody, my name is Louise Atlanting and I'm in uh, Chibuktuk, otherwise known as Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I just uh, wrapped up the Grand Prix Festival, which is celebrating the Acadian and Mi'kmaq culture. And today I'm making a, a visit to the statue of Edward Cornwallis. I want to see this thing. And uh, it's straight ahead of me and I'm just going to kind of videotape the experience of seeing this thing, really. Okay, so I'll show you what I see and uh, what I'm going to say to the guy, I guess. Hey? All right, so as you can see behind me is a statue, Edward Cornwallis. Let's go see what the plaque says because uh, I'd like to see the history of this. Okay, so it says, Edward Cornwallis, 1713 to 1776. After an active career in the British Army, Cornwallis, the founder of Halifax, I thought it was Chibuktuk, um, was appointed to governor and captain general of Nova Scotia in 1749. Ordered in that year to establish a fortified settlement as a buffer, as a buffer, uh, between New England and New France. As a buffer, does that mean New France was in on this? It says, and as a counterpoise to the fortress of Louisbourg, he arrived in Chibuktu Bay, okay, that's how I know the name, uh, with a large body of settlers pro proceeded to clear land and lay out the town of Halifax. Now, to clear land, does that just basically mean the deportation? Or, like, uh, were we considered land? Is that how they viewed us? Because there were people here. Okay, so they proceeded to clear the land and lay out the town of Halifax. It says he returned to England in 1752, before the deportation, leaving behind the beginnings of a thriving town. Hmm. He later resumed his army career in 1762 and was appointed to the governor of Gibraltar. Okay. So that's, that's what they say about this guy. Alright, so... Uh, I'm going to show you some of the, the sights here. Let's see if I can figure out how to use my camera to flip this angle around. Don't think here, let's see. Um, oh, well, I'll just go this way. Okay, so over here we have some personal comments that have since been left on the statue by people. That one says coward, just like MS. I don't know who MS is referring to, but it says the word coward. And... Um, other folks have commented, it says, dismantle white supremacy, and I think we're all kind of sharing that feeling right now. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, um, I'm, I'm in with that. Uh, I didn't write that, by the way. I, I'm just coming here <laughs> reading this stuff. I don't want to get arrested for none of this. This is not my baggage. That's not, well, it's everybody's baggage is what it is. Um, there was something else there, but I can't make out what it said. So anyways, um, here's the back of the statue. Looks like a Batman cape or something, eh? It's like a, just this big old cape. Trying to pass him off some kind of a superhero, I guess. I don't know. Uh, there's a, 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 a sign on his thigh, and I can't actually make out what it is, but I'll try to get a photo of it. It looks, oh, you know what it is? It looks like somebody posted a picture of a lady, uh, and, and like there's a post-it note or something on his thigh that somebody left. I'll try to get a picture just to, to understand the comments left. Okay, so that's Cornwallis. Okay, now um, I'll, I'll explain how my family was affected by that guy. Um, my family are from the Grand Prix area, Ile Royale. Um, we were in Louisburg as well. And Cornwallis was given uh, orders through Amherst to um, scalp the Mi'kmaq uh, for a bounty and also to gather women and children for a bounty. In my family, we remember the fact that when they gathered these people, they didn't really check whether or not they were full status or what. There was no status back then. They just figured if you were either Migma or Métis, your scalp was worth a bounty. So both Acadians and Mi'kmaq people 
and the Métis in between were killed for their scalps by that guy. Um, they were also involved at the time with the distribution of smallpox blankets, which my family were subject to. Uh, what they did was they brought, um, they, they took the smallpox blanket from the hospital, put it in wooden boxes container and distributed it to people and told them don't open it until you get home so that you can share the blessings with your community. And so they took things like handkerchiefs, they took things like blankets, and they gave these things out. And, of course, it, it brought smallpox to my people. Now, my uncle, Zach Doiron, was the survivor of smallpox in his family. He was the only one to survive. He was orphaned. He ended up fleeing to um, New Brunswick, and then uh, he went to Burnt Church, reserve area now uh, where he he was uh, um, taken care of and then later on he became one of the founding fathers of Karakat New Brunswick um, as uh, among those who received land grants in that zone so that was Zach Doiron so this guy had a personal effect on my family if Zach didn't survive I wouldn't be here today okay and this is the guy who worked with the other guys who were trying to wipe us away. 90% of the Mi'kmaq were wiped away because of the actions of these guys, Amherst and Cornwallis. Okay? The Cornwallis scalping law is still in the books. At the time, I wrote to Stephen Harper and I wrote to the uh, Nova Scotia Premier and I asked them to revoke the law. And the Premier's office told me, because it's an indigenous issue, it's a federal issue. And I was told by Stephen Harper's office, the PMO, that it is not a federal issue because uh, Canada didn't exist, so it's under the jurisdiction of Nova Scotia. So because of that response, we had this reaction of neither side is going to do a goddamn thing about it. And that's how I had to deal with this. And so up to the age of my parents, we had illiteracy because of the leaders who created the laws. Okay? The, like, uh, my parents were, were systematically subject to racism, and not a lot of people know that even here in Nova Scotia. They don't know their own history because we've been fractured as people. They haven't heard the rest of the story. Now, the, the population that you see around Nova Scotia are basically the New Englanders who repopulated this area. And I don't blame them, because they often don't know the history of what we endured. They were raised in a system of education that denied them the totality of the history, just as my parents were raised without the education of those stories. Okay? The way that this history survived was through the family knowledge, and through word of mouth, and through teachings that were basically forbidden. Okay? So you can't blame the people of Nova Scotia today for the sins of the past and the sins of the forefathers who created this mess because they honestly have no clue the magnitude of what took place. They don't understand that. They were not part of that. They were innocents brought in after the fact. But there are those in the power establishments who do know, who did keep that information away from us, who did prevent the history books from telling the full tale. Conrad Black, for example, is to me a modern-day racist because he wrote a book of the history of Canada and completely negated the input of Canada's indigenous people in the crafting of this nation. Okay, there are modern-day racists governing the message that our children are being taught today. And as part of Truth and Reconciliation, we have to stand firm and say that this is no longer acceptable. Okay? People like Conrad Black shouldn't have their voice emphasized in a racist spin to further contaminate future generations with ignorance, okay? The people of Nova Scotia here don't know the full story because they were not taught it, okay? So it's up to us, actually, as survivors, as the people who've lived through it, as the people of the families who endured this, to approach today's generation not in the spirit of adversarial, adversarial conflict, not in the spirit of even critiquing them. We have to learn to love each other's children with honor and dignity and respect. We have to 
learn to love one another enough to open up and tell the truth of what happened. We will never conquer this by way of holding anger or holding um, positions of adversarial nature, okay? Because they're, these folks are here today. These families are here today. Their children are here today on our lands that we knew as ours as well. Okay? Don't repeat history by taking from other people what was taken from us. Otherwise, all we're doing is we're passing the hate along to another generation. If we're going to bury this hatchet, it has to be together. And it has to be with truth. It has to be with honest communication. Okay? These statues are part of the machine that fed the lies. This is an abomination to me, as if somebody built a park to Paul Bernardo. These are killers that are being honored. And people were taught that they're heroes. Okay? So if we're going to teach truth, we can't be angry, we can't want to kick people out, we can't want revenge. Because all that's doing is it's feeding the seeds of division and it will not heal us if we do that. We see already in the States what the seeds of division are doing to people. Okay, it ends here. And hate's not going to win this. It's God be love. It's God be love. Okay, so it's up to us to go to the Anglican churches and the Protestant churches and to the local communities and to the local historians to really speak truth of our legacy and to find a way where we can all collaborate to create a better way for all our children. Every child deserves education. Every child deserves food. Every child deserves the same support to accomplish a greater whole for the totality of our world and our community. It's a shared community still to this day. We're still here. We haven't gone away. They did not exterminate us. I'm here standing safely on the grounds of Chibuktuk, Halifax, and I'm not getting scalped today. Even though the orders are there in the books, they're not being acted upon. It's safe for me to come here, as it is safe for anyone in the world to visit this place. Okay? We're not the same generation. We don't face the same risks. It's a different world we're living in. And the future is ours to craft together. It's ours to design together. And we won't win this by any other way other than working on a path towards love. What we're seeing in Virginia is a legacy of hate and fear. And the only way to break it is by taking the power back. Okay? This guy is dead. He can no longer contribute anything in this world in terms of a further legacy beyond what he has already done. But I, as an Acadian Mi'kmaq survivor of generations, am breathing, and I'm walking, and I'm living, and I'm telling to this guy this, the legacy of this. Edward Cornwallis, I pledge to love every single one of your ancestors and your children as much as I love mine. I pledge to not hate. I pledge to tell truth. I pledge to undo the lies and to work towards the truth of history so that we all know, so that we all understand, so that a park where children of all races and colors can play without being overshadowed by a symbol of hate and a symbol of just systematic racism. We don't need it anymore. This is a children's park and there's no room in a children's park for this. This kind of legacy has got to go. It's the right thing to do. This is the wrong place for this kind of statue. I'm sure there's better places for it, but not here. Not in the heart of a community where the children of all ethnicities play. Okay? We deserve a place 
that gives a tribute not to the heroes of war and racism and colonialism, but to those who foster peace, love, and social cohesion. Okay? So I leave this place and I'm not mad at him. You know why I'm not mad at him? Because he's dead. He's done. His age is closing. His legacy dies with me in my family. I will not carry hate against any Protestant, any white person who is in this area or anything like that because I, I just don't, don't see a world the same. My world includes everybody. My world includes people of all walks of life. The, the concepts of lines and ownership of earth, that wasn't my people. That's not who I am, and that's not what I believe in. Okay? So really, does that thing have any power over me? The answer is hell no. No, it doesn't. It's a piece of frickin' metal on a rock, a testimony of an age that has passed, and a power that no longer has any grip in my life. Okay? That, that thing, that thing is a symbol that's got to go, in my view. But will I hate people? And will I mistrust authority? And will I get angry about it? No. No. I think it's just time. It's just time to move on. I'm not going to let it color my future. Okay? Because the truth is, every baby born counts. Regardless of the past, we have to look at every baby equally, treat them equally, love them equally. And I think the, if love, if a better love and support for people comes as a result of that guy, okay, as a result of the rejection of this, then I think that's actually a positive thing, okay? Today's the age when we have to turn this negative into a positive, okay? We see what's happening in the States. It's time for change, okay? If that were a statue of Trump, do you think people would support it? Trump never killed anybody as much as this guy did, okay? This is no place for this anymore. He's done. Thank you.